How did I get involved with the Child Protection Unit in Cebu, Philippines? Um, it originally started with something quite random. Um, I was sat minding my own business under my mango tree uh, when a friend of mine, Eric, turned up with another expat and they were asking my advice relating to somebody had filed a case of assault against Eric. Um, the conversation carried on and I asked for the background and it transpired that the day before Eric and his friend had been at a bar in Talise called a Rogers Bar which I now think is Legtang Grill. Um, Roger had some issues relating to minors. Um, were they taken seriously? The police had given him some cautions, let's put it that way. I don't know if anything else happened later on or because this is going back a few years. Um, but people were well aware of Roger's issues. Now, what happened was Eric and his friend were sat having a beer Roger turned up by motorcycle, then about five minutes later, a young girl turned up with a guy at the gate, and then the girl went and sat with Roger. Um, Eric asked, who's, who's this Roger? And uh, basically the reply was, well, this, this is my daughter. So they had a few beers, then when Roger went to the toilet, um, Eric asked the girl, who's that? Is that your daddy? And the girl said, no, it's my boyfriend. Um, the girl was under 12, let's put it that way. Um, when um, Roger returned, a provocation occurred and some fighting broke out, which is where the advice from the guys was being requested the following day. Um, in the Philippines, if you file a case against each other, it often cancels out because it becomes one word against another. But in uh, Eric's case, he actually had a witness with him. Um, but my concern was with Roger. What was he doing with this minor? So I contacted a police friend of ours, and he then put me in touch with um, his boss. And then his boss asked, could I come out and meet you on Monday? And I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know much, but I'm quite willing to discuss things with you, what I know, etc. Um, and the guy turned up. And Nick had some cards. Not like this, this, this is just an example. Um, it's basically a business card size. Um, well, it's a business card, basically, but it's the wrong type of business you want to be involved in. They're handed out to police. They have your picture on it. They have your email, phone number, information, the things they're looking for relating to you um, if you're wanted by the police. Um, now, the funny thing was, Roger didn't have one of these, but there was five other ones all relating to Roger's place, Lactan Grill. Um, they were interested in multiple people. There'd been some cases filed already relating to some individuals. Um, there was one that was very specific to relating to putting girls in front of webcams. Um, so that was my introduction to the Child Protection Unit. And for those trolls that go, oh, it's, you're snitching on expats, these are child abusers, they're not expats, they're the worst scum on the planet as far as I'm concerned. Um, but moving on from that, this is how things developed. The Ella Joy murder case happened in Minglanilia and the Burgers were accused at Cebu Airport of committing the crime. It later um, went to court because on TV and everything. And in that, there was CCTV footage showing that A, they weren't actually where the murder happened but b when, when i say that there was footage that showed them at the reception and in the restaurant of a hotel in cebu at the same time as the murder allegedly happened so that case was sort of dismissed but that is still an ongoing thing as far as i'm aware because the philippines refuses to admit they got it wrong instead saying there was a lack of evidence what there's a lack of evidence because they weren't there um but then that carried on 
Um, because, because what happened when the actual murder took place, I went and got the image from the local police station because they said there was been a sketch artist thing went and got it put it on the internet and you better find the sketch because it was me that actually put it on the web um but later on they went and arrested arrested another expat and his girlfriend um which was a british expat now being british has nothing to do with it the, the reality is I had information relating to what was going on in the background. Um, certain individuals requesting could they point the police at foreigners, specific foreigners, um, for the, um, what do you call it, the reward. There was a lot of stuff going on that people aren't aware of. Now... I have all the information about what really happened, but let's put it this way. The police do not want to touch it with a barge pole because it's been such a fiasco. Um, but uh, sort of lost my thought here. But the, the thing is, when all this came about, I then went and mapped the area. I then looked at all the different scenarios of what could actually have happened. And one of the things that came up um, was Thomas Rutland. Now... Thomas Rutland was actually in Talise. Uh, let me find this for you. He was actually in Talise because um, he was actually arrested relating to an incident because he'd been in jail since February 21st, 2011. The murder took place on the 8th, which meant they were pretty close together in location wise. Um, this is why I took an interest in this, because Thomas Rutland is actually a person that was involved in a very large uh, child abuse ring um, involving a board uh, website group um, called Dreamboard. Right, so I took an interest in trying to understand what really happened with the murder. I didn't take a biased view on he did it, they did it. I looked at what facts were available. The first one being Thomas Rutland was actually in that area. And that was the discussion I had with some senior police officers. Thomas Rutland was in that area. We know he's involved in these sort of, well, maybe not murder activities, but being involved with child abuse. Um, was there a link there? And then, my, you know, because there's a news uh, article relating to that. In fact, let me pause the video and I'll add it. So I started blogging about these specific things going on and things didn't make any sense. They didn't match up. Um, but also, like, Thomas Rutland was found in this area. Um, he was within driving distance. And from Minganilia to Talise, there is a back road that you could disappear onto. But I still could not understand how a foreigner could get anybody from a school without being noticed. Not in that area. It's impossible. Um, the reality is there was no foreigner involved. But that's another story. And the PMP aren't really interested in that. There's other stuff going on in the background, which I don't know all the facts about. But they, there is something that does seem to be protecting a certain individual. Anyway, so what happened next? Well... The reality was, because it was on my blog, I was contacted by another individual that likes to track people down that are committing crimes, etc. And he had been offered information relating to um, Thomas Rutland. Um, the reason being, Thomas Rutland, um, this guy was... The guy that contacted me was not a hacker. The guy he knows was a hacker. Um, but he was trying to sell the information to... Um, the contact they had contacted me through my e uh, email and website and saying, Oh, I have this information because the reason the guy was hacking was basically for credit cards and stuff like that. He was very illegal anyway. Um, but he wanted money for this information he had uncovered. Um, but the guy that contacted me over about six weeks and I persuade the guy to give the information for free. Um, the end result was a screened set of images. Now, when I say screened, the, there was a lot of um, 
images the guy had actually recouped from hacking and I basically turned around and says I cannot receive any illegal images at all um, I am only interested in images which I can actually help locate people um, this is when I say locate people I'm talking about locating children and you know I'm looking for the face shots etc because I can feed this on to the police what happened was is we managed to get the hacker to negotiate and they transferred the files directly to a police laptop in a location in Talise. Um These images, like I said, were not of a risky scenario um, or illegal um, because I'm not stupid to walk into being... Um, found with images or a sensitive nature um, my concern was actually locating the children because by now Thomas Rutland had been arrested and was now already in in uh, the US how he got to the US is another story um, but he was being arrested relating to the dream board case which was a pedophile ring and it appears that Thomas Rutland was utilizing photographs of young uh, girls and selling on the internet um, for abuse whatever um, but he originally from the information I looked at was running a talent photography place over in Banilad um, for for young girls and he's obviously done his homework he'd been there for a long period of time um, but Basically what transpired was the images were then set up for a conference within Cebu and well the whole Visayas region to try and locate the children because they were aware they had been abused and were looking for um, obviously trying to protect them and bring them back into protective environments because um, you don't know how they ended up there in the first place you know who were they coerced into it were was it so children sold into it etc because the problem you've got is like cordova um let me add another link to that now i'll add the rest of the story in the links below um so you can actually go to all these articles and read them for yourself um but this is where my connection is with child protection Basically, I do not want bad expats in the Philippines, and I know some people are on about, oh, this guy's married to this, or his girlfriend's this. They're <laughs> in the realms of things, there are some serious problems in the Philippines. If you want to hunt somebody down, uh, there's plenty of really bad people out there um, that do need to meet their demise, even, in some ways. Um, but that's why I do it. The, I don't see Philippine kids, I see kids, as simple as that. Because some people seem to think, oh, well, I don't want to get involved. In That's fine. At the same time, at the start of the video, there is crime numbers you could actually call and anonymous, anonymously um, tip people in the right direction. Um, but that's, that's how I got involved in the child protection. Uh, do I regret doing anything I've done? The answer is no. Um, I can sleep well at night knowing I've actually helped get rid of some bad people. Uh, the Thomas Rutland thing, um, he's probably one of the worst people that has been in the Philippines for some time. Um, but at the same time, he's not the only one. So I actually proactively say, if you know people are doing stuff that you know is actually wrong, quite happily get them arrested get rid of them get them out of the philippines the philippines doesn't need the world's garbage um on its doorstep um can't say any any other way um now i could actually go on about what people write about me on the internet but i'll quite simply say if somebody posts stuff about me in such a negative way i would actually question why they're writing it in the first place um 
because I'm an open book. It's very easy to find stuff on me from my blogs and everything else because I've been on the internet since 2007, 2008. Um, I have no illegal activity, never been involved in illegal activity, but you will find a lot of information relating to me proactively helping get rid of scum. Um, and you have to question, why is it some people want to spend so much time and effort attacking me um, for actually doing something they should be doing themselves? Simple as that. But anyway, I didn't want to make this a troll bashing thing, but I just wanted to make people aware of, A, you can actually make a difference in the Philippines. B, you don't have to hit, stick your, your head up above the... Um, was the Japanese version of the tallest nail you get hit, you can do it anonymously. Um, I'm more public, more focal and vocal um, because I want to try and encourage people to actually help clean up the Philippines um, because a lot of the bad stuff is from the expat community and the ramblings between expats is often very, very small compared to some of the really bad stuff that's ongoing. Um, it's often not even... It, there's a lot more to it as well um, because there's, there's businesses in Hong Kong, for example, that are connected through the child abuse stuff. They are very, very switched on, very high tech, and they're more on the software side because they utilize things like laptops and stuff because it's for them to give away laptops is nothing um they that's this is where the problem is is they separate a lot of the activities and have a business front in hong kong and then have somebody well a lot of people causing abuse in the philippines um i'll leave it at that thanks for watching